A Quiet Place was definitely one of the most intensest and nerve shredding films of so anything in sci-fi or horror that I've seen in the last few years. And I just recently saw its new sequel, A Quiet Place Part 2. But is this a nerve shredding continuation that's as good as the critics say? Or is it just something that needs to be put on silence forever? Watch this spoiler-free review and find out. Bad days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name's Dual, better known to you as the Big D, and, I, and this time I bring to you a spoiler-free review of the just now released sci-fi horror flick known as A Quiet Place Part 2. Now, this of course is a continuation of the first one. Now, if you've not seen my re-review of the first movie, I advise you to click the card that's about to come up right about now. There we go. And watch this before you go on. Because like I said, this is a spoiler-free review, but I'm just going to play it safe, okay? Okay. Excuse me. Okay, I just wanted to give y'all enough time to click on the link, the card that just came up. Okay. Now, of course, we continue to follow the Abbott family, well, the survivors, as they navigate, as they are forced to continue to navigate and survive in a post-apocalyptic world inhabited by blind monsters with an acute sense of hearing. John Krasinski returns to direct as Paramount once again re-releases it. Now, Krasinski returns despite his character was killed up, but in a flashback sequence set before the events of the first film, as a matter of fact. Emily Blunt, Noah Jupe, and M Millicent Simmons return as the remaining members of the Abbott family. Celia Murphy and Jamon Hansu join the cast. Anyway, from what I've seen, I think this film's a little bit of a... Well, a step from, up from the other one. Despite we were originally supposed to get this last year, but ever since the you-know-what occurred, well, I just can't seem to think about that. Now, anyway, if you recall from the first movie, the patriarch of the Abbott family, Lee, was killed off to, as he sacrificed himself in saving his family, his wife Evelyn, son Marcus, and deaf daughter Reagan. Plus, their newborn son. Now, Rangan, of course, has discovered that the creatures are vulnerable to high-frequency radio feedback, transmits her cochlear implant, hearing aids, noise through a microphone and radio, allowing Evelyn to fairly shoot the creatures in their vulnerable state, as you know. Because you know these creatures are... Uh, may have hypersensitive hearing, but they are covered in impenetrable armor. So, they're off to try and find a new spot, but apparently they enter a fenced off area and they encounter Ter Emmett, a former friend of Lee who takes the family to his bunker and and then they soon discover a radio signal that plays a song beyond the sea on a loop. But anyway, that's all I'm going to tell you. Reagan takes a chance and goes off to try and save her family. But let me tell you, it leads up to some real intense moments. Now, I say I gotta give credit from everyone. I believe that I gotta say the story is absolutely good. I like how we get to find out how this happened on day one before the events of the first film. And the addition of Celia Murphy's character of Emmett, well, and I really gotta say it's just so much goodness. Krasinski's direction in this is really good, and especially seeing him in the new Lee filmed opening flashback sequence that before the events of the first film was really good. Your theaters might be showing an actual introduction by him, so hope you enjoyed that. 
But anyway, uh, now Noah Jupe, who once again plays Marcus, is pretty good. Although I did have a slight downside with the character, kind of accidentally does get him and his baby bird locked up in the furnace by accident without all this little summon that Emmett uses. Uh, and then use it to open the furnace door back up. And that's tough, but so they had to survive on the oxygen the baby was given. Now, Emily Blunt, on the other hand, once again does a real good job as Evelyn. And of course, we have Jama Hansu as the man on the island. As we see, as Reagan and Emmett will encounter these people on an island later on. But I'll let you see the movie. This is a spoiler-free review, so I'm not telling you that, how they get to this here island, okay? And speaking of Reagan, I gotta give, I gotta give props to young Millicent Simmons again. She is absolutely great as Reagan, just as much as she was in the first one. I gotta tell you, this is a little deaf girl with lots of spunk in her. Well, maybe she's not a little girl, okay? <laughs> I was just threw that in for just for fun, okay? But apparently, um, she has described her character, you know, her character's evolution after the first film, according to Simmons, she she has a lot of pressure to become an adult very quickly, and she has more of a leading role in in this movie. I mean, I just gotta say, really good. She worked when ASL coach. To make sure her sign and articulation were clean, she said she felt a sense of pressure being in a position to represent the deaf and hard of hearing. So you can hear a little bit of something, but we do get to see the sign and what what that's for and what have you. So I gotta say, this film is definitely a step up from the first one. It kind of ends a little bit abruptly in ways, unlike the first one, which that's kind of another slight, that's kind of a slight negative. But I do believe we will get a third one. It, Emily Blunt has revealed that John Krasinski has an idea for a potential third film, and that there's... That Paramount has also hired Jeff Nichols to write and direct a spin-off based on an idea from Krasinski, who will produce it. So, we'll see what happens. But anyway, with a great story, great direction, great cast, and of course, a great score, which was once again done by Marco Beltrami. I gotta say, this film was perfect. It was so amazing. I did love I did enjoy it. It did get an actual showing last year, even once the pandemic struck last March, which was the month we were originally supposed to get this. But anyway, I'd say go see A Quiet Place Part 2. I think you'll enjoy, enjoy it just as much as the first one, but it's a little bit better in ways. I must warn you, though, it kind of gave me a little bit of a jump scare, two or three. <laughs> a little joke there. Yeah, I... I'm not afraid of anything, but I do get a little bit of a jump scare on in some ways, because you know how these alien creatures are. They are like, wow, greased lightning in ways. Move real, you know, which let me rephrase that. They move real quickly, but I'd say you already know that. <laughs> but anyway, A Quiet Place Part 2, you gotta check out. It's pretty good. It is playing in theaters now, and it will come to Paramount Plus. Uh, probably about later on this summer, uh, I'd say probably about July, because Paramount's giving their films about 45 days to be in theaters before they go to Paramount+. Plus. So anyway, I'm going to be giving A Quiet Place Part 2 four and a half stars. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give it a 9.5. So anyway, what did you think of A Quiet Place Part 2? Please tell me in the comment section below. If you like this video, click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel. Be a part of the Big D Nation. 
And next time, I'll be bringing to you my schedule for June, which this is going to be a big one. And which will also include my next Q&A details to follow, okay? So don't get any ideas that say, give, me, give me questions just yet, because I haven't really given you the announcement yet. <laughs> I just ran to see if you were paying attention. But anyway, thank you very much for watching. And if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other films that I have recently checked out. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of the former big owner during this here pandemic, that being Godzilla vs. Kong. I just found A Quiet Place Part 2, part two surpassed it just recently. In the upper right-hand corner is my review of another flick I just recently went and saw not so long ago, and that being Cruella. Which came in right behind A Quiet Place Part 2. Or if you'd like something more bloodier, since this was a PG-13 movie, go to the bottom left-hand corner for my review of the new Mortal Kombat that came out last month. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.